after 25 years, the Looney Tunes are teaming back up with a new NBA star for another game of basketball. So let's talk about it. When LeBron James' son is kidnapped by an evil AI, he must team up with the Looney Tunes to win a game of basketball. So I'm old enough that I remember when the original Space Jam came out, but I was old enough that I wasn't really the target audience anymore, so I don't even remember if I saw it in the theater when it first came out, but over the last 25 years, I've seen it several times along the way, but it's not like a movie that was important to my childhood or a film that I personally have nostalgia for. But now I do have children that are the perfect age to appreciate a Space Jam film, so it's fun to get to take them to the press screening to go see it. But what did I think about the film and what did they think about the film? I'll let you know in just a second. Join me down below in the comment section. Share your take on the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? And give kind of that point of reference. Do you have a bunch of nostalgia for the original or are you kind of watching this one fresh? I'd love to hear your take on it and let's get started. And for this one, I'm not going to use my normal good bad review structure because this is a different kind of film. It exists purely for the gimmick of taking a bunch of different things, cramming them together to play a game of basketball. The movie exists for the novelty of that. So if you review this movie based off the normal criteria that you evaluate a film, of course it's not going to score very well. On a story level, it is all over the place. It's trying so hard to reference so many different Warner Brothers properties, have cameos for so many different actors that it's just spread thin throughout the entire runtime. On an acting level, LeBron James, is obviously not an actor. So if you evaluate the movie based off his acting skills, of course you're going to score it very low because he's a basketball player, not a thespian. But the movie doesn't exist for the purpose of trying to explore the human condition through drama and story or to impress us with the incredible performances from its actors and basketball players. No. The movie exists because it's a lot of fun to watch an NBA star play basketball with the Looney Tunes. It's a lot of fun to have our characters going through this whole world of Warner Brothers characters and have Harry Potter music appear and then they show somewhere else and Superman's flying around. It's fun to see that. It's a movie version of how kids play with their toys. They just dump them all out and start having little adventures no matter what continuity they're in, whether they're a real life sports star or a cartoon character or an action hero, they just start smashing them into each other and playing games with them. And that's what this movie is. So is it great cinema? No. Is it fun to go into the Warner Brothers serververse and watch all of these characters explore this world and play basketball together? Yeah, of course it is. But at the same time, is it as fun as it should be? And no, it is not. If you try to evaluate the film on its own terms, does it deliver on the promise of the premise? I think it's a movie that used its time in a very strange fashion. So like in the original Space Jam, it was the Looney Tunes who had a problem and went and recruited Michael Jordan. Here, it's LeBron James that has a problem and he has to go get the Looney Tunes. And so the whole beginning of the movie, it's all about him and he's not that entertaining. He's not that good of an actor. So it's just a very strange choice to take so long for the Looney Tunes to show up. Likewise, the way it incorporates a bunch of the stuff from the WB verse, a lot of it's very superficial. It's just what you see in the trailer of they're in the background. You fly through something and you just see the name Game of Thrones. There's a lot of things like that. And even some of the ones where they kind of go in deeper and have more of a segment tied to something. It's like with The Matrix, which, you know, my nine-year-old son is the target audience for this movie and The Matrix came out 13 years before he was born. He won't be interested in The Matrix for another few years. And so there's just kind of some odd choices of what they decided to incorporate and how they decided to incorporate it. I would say the big stand of the movie is Don Cheadle as the AI algorithm. He is 
having so much fun and they give him a bunch of time to just chew up the scenes, be insecure, manipulative. So I think he was the real standout of the movie. But of course, anytime you're spending an hour with the Looney Tunes as they're appearing in a bunch of WB movies and playing basketball, that's amusing. And there's something to the novelty of play, watching this basketball game where every single shot is packed with a hundred different Easter eggs for you to try and spot everything in the background. So this was a frustrating one because there was a lot of things that were enjoyable about it, but it was so easy to imagine a better version of the movie. Real quick, before I give you my final score, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know, what did you think about Space Jam Legacy? Also, I took my two oldest kids to go see it, and then we sat down and recorded a review with them with their thoughts on the movie as the actual target audience. Here's a quick version of it. Liam, what did you think about Space Jam Legacy? Good. Good. Karis, you didn't even see the movie, but I'm glad you think it's good. <laughs> Chloe, what did you think about the movie? Great. Is it your seventh favorite movie of all time? Yes. All right, check out our review over on the vlog channel. The other one. The other one. I think yeah, it's the other channel. Up there. I think it's up there. I think it's right here. Yeah. I think it's right here. At the end of the day, if you sit down as a family to watch this movie, there is a lot of fun to be had. There's a couple laugh out loud moments, but there was also so much potential here that they didn't fully live up to. Overall, only a C plus, but on the entertainment scale, a seven out of 10 and stream it if you're a fan of the original one or of a family that likes this kind of thing. Otherwise, you can sit this one out. If you enjoyed this video, check out another review just like it right over there. I don't even know what's being recommended to you by the algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.